So we start making noise as soon as we come to this word. Research indicates that these noise are not senses. They are indicators of what is going on in our mind. As we grow, we think deeper and wider. The more we go in our thinking, the better we go in our understanding. Some people go so deeply in their thinking that they even take thinking as their professions. Yes, these people are philosophers, which in Greek means people who love wisdom. Some philosophers lived 2,000 years ago, but their words are still with us today. Descartes defines thinking as being, and he said, I think, therefore I am. Aristotle took a humble approach to thinking, and he said, the more you know, the more you don't know. Why have so many philosophers be fascinated by thinking? I think the question is very simple. Thinking is beautiful. We don't have to be philosophers to feel the beauty of deep thinking. Take our everyday experience, for example, when you have made a mistake in your math test, you may say, oh, I know it. It was just careless. Next time, I won't have the same mistake. But is this excuse really the result of your deep thinking? Before I, share, before I answer this question, I want to share with you my two personal experiences. Plato said that thinking is the talking of the soul with himself. Mm. The talking of the soul with himself, which reminds me of an incident happened to me in 2016 when I was in junior high school. I was asked to do a math question. It is, just, it is not just about working out the answer. It challenged you to think as many approaches as possible. Back then, the question is a geometry question. Unlike other questions about computing, geometry questions often Im demand imagination and creativity. So I first used the most often used methods, trying to work out the relations among each element in the geometry graph. Some relations are obvious, while others are very subtle and elusive, which often requires adding extra lines or other variables. Determined, I set my mind to it. I worked on this problem for three days in a row, and finally, the Eureka moment came. I thought I had exhausted all possible solutions, and secretly, I was a little proud of myself. But when I presented my solutions to my teacher, he told me that calculus approach was the easiest way in dealing with questions of this kind. You can imagine how I feel. I was very sad and felt like a balloon floating in the air, and suddenly, someone punctured it. Back then, I was just a 15-year-old boy and that was the first time I heard about the word calculus. My math teacher's words lighted my aspiration to know it. To know the idea is easy, but to know the application is hard. After a few weeks devoted to calculus, I know that it is a method used to look at the whole from a specific point. I tried this on dozens of geometry problems. During this process, I focused on how to find the crucial point in the hole, how other methods could give me some clues, and how can them be combined together. I was thinking, thinking all the time, thinking very hard. Gradually, I feel there were connections in my thinking. The strength of connections depends on how deep you think. I tried my best, and I could feel that my deep and hard thinking established a basic framework of calculus for me. A few days later, I used this framework into solving a very hard math question. And this time, I solved it very quickly. And most importantly, I feel the beauty of math, the beauty of deep thinking. It was, it was like cutting a diamond to show its beauty. From then on, I was fascinated by deep thinking. The pleasure I get from solving a hard math question is addictive. Not only in math can you feel the beauty of deep thinking, but also you can get it from TOK. TOK means series of knowledge. The great artist Rodin used to say that, in short, beauty is everywhere. It is not that she is lacking to our eye, but our eyes fail to perceive her. Yes, beauty is everywhere 
but not all people have the ability to find it. Thankful, we have our dear Ms. Sharma, our brainy and beautiful TLK teacher. If we have any problems in finding beauty in TLK, she will help us find it. Ms. Sharma teaches us not the specific knowledge, but the way of understanding the whole world. I conclude what she emphasized most in the class, what counts as evidence. How do we judge which is the best model for a specific event? What does a specific theory mean in our everyday life? These questions help us think about ourselves and beyond. How can we view the world? How can we know the world? How can we judge the world? In, our, in my TOK class, I finally understand why philosophers are so fascinated by it. The truth is, knowledge is like a black hole. It is infinite in range and internal existence. Deep thinking is like the only shred of light that has not been swallowed by the black hole, gluing in the endless dark, guiding us through the darkness. Then, back to the previous question. I think the answer is not just about a mistake. It's more about a lack of understanding to the question itself. Our life is in the same situation. Reading a book is not just understand the written words. You should read between the lines. If you love to do something, you should go further and think about why you love it and what attracts you the most. A very handy example is if you are lost in choosing a curriculum or which school you should go, you can go deeper and think about what can give you a better future. If you are still struggling it, you can go to Chibao the White. You can't miss it. There are people who seldom think. There are people who think little. They don't know how much she lost in not thinking deep. Deep thinking can help us evaluate ourselves more thoroughly and see the world more clearly. That's why I'm here calling us to think deep. Do not always fly with the flock. Sometimes fly alone. Live your own life. Research from the past, learn from your mistake, and design your own life. Even in our everyday life, deep thinking can help us make more sensible decisions. Increasing our GPA is one of them. To recap my speech, I want to say that beauty is everywhere and within our speech. It is practical and reachable. Don't miss it. Thank you. <laughs>